So today was optimization day. Oh, how I love optimization day. It's so satisfying to get these great results out of things. Look at that. We're already, we're already recording a full screen video here and above 30 frames a second. This used to be like low 30s to like high 20s. Um, but check it out. The most important things you can see that's been improved today from optimizing things is uh, the AI system. You can see it's using around like 20 milliseconds. That was hovering up at about 80 milliseconds at the beginning of the day. Uh, the move system as well. You can see the move system is currently using one or two milliseconds. Um, that used to be using like above 80, 90 to 100 milliseconds. And we're talking out of out of one second. All of these milliseconds here, are out of one whole second, this is how many milliseconds that system is using. Um, then you've got collision also was a huge usage. It was like up there in like the 70s, 80s. Um, and then the render system used to be a lot more, uh, like significantly more. The render system animate. So that's, so render T, uh, it says, you know, it's about 50 milliseconds or so. Um, that's the render tick. And render A is the render anim. So... Let's take a look at uh, another little area here. Like we're at, uh, the render anim is currently at about, oh, 200 milliseconds. Go up here. This is a kind of a really intensive area up here because we've got a flame entity that is causing um, nearby entities to flicker, which means they have to repaint all the time, which means they have to repaint all the entities underneath them all the time too. So the render anim is taking a lot of time no matter what here at this point. Um, but it used to take a lot more because there was many inefficiencies with these suit objects over here. One of them was that the suits didn't weren't using an occlude flag. So um, I put some code in there that shows me now when there's uh, an entity that has voxels but has no sort of occlusion flags for it. There's global occlude, which globally occludes the model itself. And then there's uh, occlude, which um, occludes the individual model for each entity. Um, and that's needed for entities like these suits here because they rotate. So they have their own individual rotations, so they need to have their own individual occlusions. So um, let's take a look at some of the code that made these significant results. And I will say they are pretty significant. When I'm not recording a full screen video on this old, old laptop, um, I'm getting 60 frames a second right here in this little corridor walking through with all these suits. This is a really intensive place because these suits can rotate um, and there's lots of them and it, and they all have particles above them. So that uh, is really neat. Now I can walk through here at 60 frames a second and without any issues. And, um, and you can see it's actually locked pretty well at like around 30 frames a second. That's high 20s even while recording this video. Uh, and then, okay, let's check this out too. Um, well, this is one of the issues that got fixed today. See how the uh, the particles above the suits have little blue rectangles showing their render boxes. Those are the boxes that, like, are full of entities. If it, something in that, when we go to erase that, those particles, we need to redraw entities underneath them. So um, that's what those boxes are for. But those boxes used to be a lot less efficient because they all stretch down to zero at the bottom of the of this suit right here. All of these rectangles used to stretch all the way down to the bottom of that suit. So it will cause a lot of other entities behind that to re-render every single time the animate was run. So that's that was a huge, huge efficiency. Um, let's take a look at more of the code. There's a lot of check-ins today, a lot of commits. Oh, this was huge too. Uh, Erasive was used every single time um, a move system would move an entity. It had to re uh, erase the um, erase the entity from the collision grid. So the collision grid um, that used erase if and erase if was so easy to optimize. Check this out. This is pretty cool because this is probably relevant to your C plus plus project too. If you if you were if you write code in C plus plus, check it out. This is pretty simple, right? Instead of this for loop calling v.end every single time. It calls end 
or it, for, it creates a variable for end and then just compares it. So right, so we don't have to actually call this method, whatever this method does, like creating an iterator which calls a constructor, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot that could do just calling dot end, right? So why not compute it once? But then you also do need to compute it again if you're erasing. So um, right, when you erase an entity, you have to update your end value. Uh, so that that was a huge optimization actually because it really made the move system a lot um, a lot faster. And then oh, this is actually really huge too. Grid move. Um, let's take a look at this in uh, Vim here. Grid. Oh. So grid dot h. Let's look at the, the the header here. We used to just have a function that would edit a grid. So you would um, edit, call, you'd have different kinds of grid edit kinds, like you could paint, erase, or set. Um, and then grid edit kind, or I mean move here, uh, is a new function, which is so much faster than calling grid edit erase, and then a grid, grid edit paint. Um, let's see why. In grid CPP, Um, here's what here's what edit has to do edit this is the biggest part of the optimization here edit has to go and edit um, the map and the vector of all ids so all these grids they keep track of entity IDs in a grid pattern so you can quickly look up an entity by its position in two dimensions um, using the grid this is two-dimensional grid, basically. It allows you to quickly look up IDs. So, um, if you're just moving an ID, right? If you're erasing it and painting it at the same time, then you don't need to move. You don't need to change the the IDs map at all. You don't have to do any of this stuff. And that was a huge, huge thing because an ID uh, editing a map can be a really time-intensive thing. Um, so that's the biggest optimization there in grid move. It just skips that step. And it has um, a, the box where the entity was and the box where the entity is going to be. And so it can go and, and actually filter out a lot of the positions based on um, the intersection of those two boxes. That's like huge, really, really significant too. So it's only going and editing the grid um, in just a very, very small area compared to this whole grid edit erase plus grid edit paint, which has to edit all the elements, all of them, no matter what. So this is a really optimized way to move an entity. And uh, the move system uses that. That's a huge win there. Um, and then there's a lot of other, um, let's see if there's any more like noteworthy commits today. Oh yeah, the collision system. This was huge right here. This is really not huge as far as like the code goes. It was more just a, like kind of a stupid move that the code did. Um, I rearranged collision components. So I rearranged the way damage works in my engine. Um, basically damage used to be part of collision components and that required the collision system to loop over all ids with collision boxes where in this game right now, I have a lot of entities that represent sky. They have no render component. They're just a collision component that basically says, you can't walk here, it's sky. And, um, but none of them do damage. You don't, you don't like step on some sky and hurt yourself. Although that would be a one way a game would work. But anyways, um, since they don't have to do that, it's a lot better to optimize for a system or create the components so that, um, call that, so if there's damage, then it's just part of the component, right? So health components, it's like, duh, put the damage in the health component because all, for example, all of the sky entities, let's say there's thousands of sky entities, they don't, they all don't need to have, um, I mean, yeah, they all don't need to have health components, right? So, so that will be completely, that's why the, the collision system is so much faster because it's not calling this huge loop over tons of entities to see if all of them have damage. This is actually really time consuming, looping over like thousands of ids. So that, that was a huge win there too. Um, the AI system, uh, that was, I made it faster by improving the performance of find ids 
And that's just, um, the what's the gist of that? This is already getting to be a long video, I'm sure. Uh, the gist of making that faster was to give it a range. So instead of find collision systems find um, uh, looping over every single collision system, Ian, it loops over a certain number of them in a range. So or that here it is in in this within a range, and then it's also got the feature to still loop over all Ids if you don't give it a, if you get a, a range of zero or less. So that was that that was that improved the AI system significantly. Uh, and then the rest were the refresh models, which I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So anyways, lots of optimizations today. Wraith Binder is running a lot faster, and it makes me feel good. I love optimization day.